And then on December 3rd, we have uh, Ez uh, Urza Menagerie Tinker. The 4th, we have Dom Sirius. On uh, the 10th, we have uh, Fabio Makisig. And on the 11th, we have Paradox. So um, definitely getting into um, into the ending of the year. So definitely uh, check out our, um, our social media to see who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. All right, I think we talked enough about us. No, Kalika? No. We never are done talking about us. Well, in this case, you actually might be right. Because it is a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling <laughs> with the news. And in the news, WWE ID, um, newest signee, is a friend of the show. A one Zoe Sega. Uh, we interviewed mm. Zoe quite some time ago. Um, always been a friend of the show. Uh, congratulations to Zoe for signing. And I think she has a lot of upside. Um, hopefully we see her on that good NXT sooner rather than later. And of course, congrats are in order. And hey man, if anyone else got faith in her, we do. We got her back. Just don't forget about us. Don't forget about us. Oh, yeah. I know, I'm just, that sounds like I'm dry begging. But you know what? <laughs> I am dry begging. I am dry begging. Just like our post. But, <laughs> just give us a like. <laughs> just give us the follow. Just as well. She follows us. <laughs> I think she does. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, another name signed to WWE ID is a one um, Kaylee Ray. Um. Obviously, a former uh, TNA Impact and um, AEW uh, wrestler. Um, I mean, this has to be like the last stop on her journey, no? To get to the big one. It would have to be. Third time's a charm. But, you know, men she, she had to take a break for mental reasons. And hopefully, she comes back freshly perspective, with a fresh perspective and best of luck to her as long as they don't uh, re-sign Chris Jericho I think she'd be fine oh he ain't going nowhere he's on like isn't he in the middle of the ocean somewhere um I think we we would hope that he is so he's not on our TV screens but <laughs> well I was talking about like his cruise or something yeah something like that yeah I was on a cruise I feel like he has a cruise every three weeks for some odd reason i keep like he got a deal with Carnival Cruises or something. You know, you might not be wrong about that. But um, I wish he was on a cruise again. I do think that there is some upside for uh, Kaylee Ray. Is it Kaylee Ray or Kylie Ray? I think it's Kylie Ray. I think it's Kylie. Yeah. It's Kylie Ray. She, I mean. I think that. She low key has the potential to take on that original Bailey Huggle role. You know, because mm. Bailey was playing that character, but Kylie is actually that ca character, like in real life. So, if they market all right, she'd be licensed to print money. Agreed. This she could. I mean, she could, but if it did work with the original, what makes you think it's going to work with the... Well, I think, you know, at that t time, Bailey wasn't exactly that character anymore. Like, she was, you know, struggling with that. And, you know, us as fans, we could see when... People are not being genuine with us, and we call them out on their shit. So, could well, let me ask you this for instance could you see Billy going back to being the hugger? She'll never go back, can't go back. Then that leaves an opening for somebody else to take that role, no? Mm. 
depends if they even want that role because they're kind of going more edgy. I mean, I get what you mean, but again, Kylie could fit that description perfectly, and I think the whole I think she'll edginess. fit it as herself. Hmm? I think she could fit it as herself. I just think, to me, I think is the public ready for? It? Because can she do it in a sense where it's not? Oh, it reminds me of Bailey. That is a good comparison. You're absolutely right. So that's the only hurdle I see. But other than that, you know, she makes it to where it's her own thing and it's not a... A ripoff. Oh, this is... Yeah, yeah where people doesn't perceive it as a ripoff, then she'll be okay. Well, you, you mentioned that, you know, are people, you know, ready for that? Because Raw is going to um, PG-14 again. I don't want to say that they're going to go on full-on Attitude Era again. But, I mean, it does leave room for them to maybe do a little bit more than they have, you know, in the PG era. You know what I mean? Yeah, it leaves room to not insult our intelligence. Because <laughs> that's, the, I mean, to be quite honest, that's the only thing. Because when people are doing things, it makes sense why they're doing it. See, and the only reason I only think people, like prime example, those last three heel turns that they did, it made sense and it was a slow burn to it. I mean, Woods ain't there yet, but he's practically there. But everyone, you know, it's a reason where it's like, oh, I can see why they did that. Right. <laughs> and it's not just something for the sake of doing it. Now, you know, like, you know, having Kofi Kingston drop the belt in eight seconds and then I give him a rematch like he was never champion. That, 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 that part. I mean, that was like over five years ago at this point. But... But that's my point. That at least it didn't insult our intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> See? I don't. Um, again, I think it's. I think you're absolutely right. It, it it leaves them room to be a little bit more edgier, but I don't think we're going to have you know like a titty shake. Bra and panties that. match. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it's just more. Yeah. I don't know. If yeah, no, you're right. Keep like going. Amina Sakazawa and what is her name? Uh, Kali Cameron had on Collision. Wait a minute, they had something? They had a titty shaking contest on um, Collision. How the hell did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> and. For anybody that's saying, oh, you're saying the wrong words, how dare you call them titties? No, that's actually what they called it on air. Like, I'm, I'm this isn't being, you know, when I'm not um, embellishing here at all. That's, and it's funny, that's the first thing I've seen on AEW TV for quite some time at this point. <laughs> of course you did, yeah. Of, of course. But, yeah. I don't think it's a bad oh, thing, Lord. but, yeah. It, it tells you what AEW is compared to WWE right now. <laughs> um, speaking of where WWE is right now, um, top merch sales um, for the year came out. Um, number one, Cody Rhodes. Number two, Roman Reigns. Number three, Roman mm -hmm. uh, CM Punk. And uh, number four was Jay Uso. Um, I think Jay. Was, yeah, Jay Uso, low key, number four. I think it kind of tells you where people are at with, you know, the superstars that we have right now. Who, you know, who's mm -hmm. working, who's not working, and. Cody Rhodes still walking. Jay Uso's getting up there. 
And yeah, who else? Who's not going to want um a CM Punk short or? A, a I used to not want one. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and then I got one at SummerSlam with his jacket. <laughs> I think Sucker. they're gonna. I think they're gonna want that CM Punk title belt that they just dropped earlier um, yesterday. No shit. I was like, what? I mean, $700 That's is a not... bit expensive, but yeah, hey, I digress. I mean, but why would I get a belt to commemorate a champion who had it for half the amount of time as Roman? I mean, at some point, they're going to make the Roman Reigns, you know, one th- um, over 1000 They already did. They did? They, they got his own, like, Roman Reigns tribal chief. Yeah. Homie got his own one. Wow, that came that came out when he came back, the night he came back. Oh, huh. they they pushed that bitch. Gonna have to check that out. It's like a red and black with the it, it's the uh, the new logo, red oh. and black. Shit's pretty sweet. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. But the CM Punk one, the blue. I, I guess it looks tight because it's blue, and you rarely see a blue belt. In WWE. That's true. <laughs> well, um, speaking of Roman Reigns, um, starting in January, his ass is moving to Netflix. He will be on Monday Night Raw. Um, they said that a lot of, um, the bigger talent will be making a move to Raw. So, more or less, we're getting the SmackDown crew on Raw, and the Raw crew kind of drawn on SmackDown. How do you feel mm-hmm. about that? It, I mean, Netflix didn't get all that money just to settle on, you know, Gunther. <laughs> they put all that money for Gunther, but give me Roman. And it, it makes sense. It's just a matter of how they're going to include Roman in it. And and I think he's working double duties at least up until Mania. So at least that's the word. So it makes sense. Until a, an official draft will be made. I don't think the draft. I mean, they just had it. So he ain't going nowhere for a minute. I mean, usually the draft's in April. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. He, he's going to be working double duty till April, or he'll probably be like a free agent, as they will, where he can push his quote-unquote free agent agenda and then pick one. With Roman kind of, what, what, what we saw on SmackDown last night, um, and him heading to Raw, low-key Roman versus Punk rivalry? You know, Punk, when he came back, he threw it out there. People thought it was far-fetched. When he was like, I'm the original Paul Heyman guy. Oh, yeah. And it makes sense that that, uh, Heyman went back to Punk, and it makes sense... See, that's what I that's what I'm talking about. They're not insulting my intelligence. Punk go she goes back to a familiar friend. Roman's like, what the fuck? They're gonna team. Seth is gonna fuck it up for all of them. Well Seth's not in the match. <laughs> Seth is gonna fuck it up for all of them. Oh you you think Loki Seth might actually interfere in the match? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. And you know why? Because he hates CM Punk more than he does Bronson Reed. Keep in mind, they were supposed to get the scrap in until Bronson Reed right. pop, popped his ass up. So that that ain't over. And that ignites the flame to get to the rumble. See? Gotcha. So, you know, you you were saying, you know, um, uh, Paul Heyman went back to his original guy. Well, you know, I was kind of low-key thinking 
you know, Roman wasn't there to protect Paul Heyman when he got hurt, when, you know, Solo brutally attacked him. So, mm -hmm. you know, Paul Heyman low-key needs revenge on, you know, Solo as well. Obviously, he's not a wrestler. So, obviously, he called the guy he knew that could get that revenge for him, which was obviously CM Punk, which I think is just mm -hmm. brilliant. And, you know, he is Roman's wise man, so he can't just tell him, well, you wasn't here, so I'm taking, you know, that incentive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's, it's going to be a very interesting dynamic to have CM Punk in the bloodline. But we'll get into that in a, a little bit. Obviously, uh, we have a review to go along with. Um, speaking of that first war on Netflix, um, it was announced that it's going to be in, in the uh, Intuit Arena in uh, Eaglewood um, next to... Um, you know, um, the Forum and SoFi Stadium. So that little, yeah. you know, area is popping off right now. Um, that Indeed. Being, that being said, um, AEW just announced a, a set of new um, events. And on March 9th, I believe it's Full Gear, um, could be Revolution. LA. It's going to be at the Staples Center. Of course, crypto. Oh, and you know what? You're, You're right. Staples. It, You're the one that no calls one it ever call calls it, it crypto. Center. No one ever calls it crypto. Everybody calls it Staples. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of sad <laughs> if WWE kind of left Staples Center for this new arena. You know, obviously, I get it. It's the new shiny toy, and they, they want to get in there. But I much prefer Staples Center over, you know, a new arena. I Personally, I like, you know, history over new shiny objects. Um, how do you feel about AEW getting going into the Staples Center and WWE kind of abandoning it after all these years. Win-win, because at least they're not going to that shitty-ass forum. <laughs> <laughs> where where you got to go outside the stadium to go to the bar. Yes, no, I'm good. So I'm good. I'll... So basically, as long as they're not in the, the forum, you're good. Bingo. I got you. Just don't do the form. I, I'd rather have them do San Diego State again before they do the goddamn form. <laughs> well, you're not. Um, you're not wrong about that. That um, the San Diego Stadium, uh, low key a smaller arena. Um, and as we reported, I believe it was last week. Um, AEW is going into smaller arenas. Uh, they announced three nights at the Hammerstein Ballroom uh, and a couple of other events that will be um, in smaller arenas. Um, Loki, I think it would be great that they are doing, you know, Hammerstein. Obviously, it's, um, you know, not a big arena. They could fill it up. It could look good. Hopefully, the, the fans won't shit on what they're doing and they could maybe actually pick up a couple fans in the, the process, you know, if they give them very free tickets. Right. But, um, you know, even Tony Khan said, um, you know, they're going to um, max at in January. He said that he's hopeful that, and this is the first time he's actually ever said this, He's hopeful that they could pick up new fans to grow the product. What a fucking concept. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Pick up more shows? What? Gee, I, I thought they would have just been content with the same 600,000 people that watches every week for the next last month. Yeah, well, that, um, that number has steadily decreased over the last couple of months. Um, the only thing that's really getting them r ratings as of right now is, uh, obviously, you know, titty shaking contests, uh, between, uh, Mina and, um, Holly, so. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need that for research purposes, um, although, I'll send it to WWE, you. it seems, it seems like AEW's got, dealing with that and NXT just got new Yamsterdam, so that's a whole nother. I mean. NXT's uh, moniker should be "We Have the Cake." Yes, they they have bakery. <laughs> and it's not Mindy's Bakery in Chicago. <laughs> I mean, they got bread over there. Yeah, every pastry you could I, want. I know Jada Parker was on World Star. That's what. That's how crazy it was. What's World World Star? Think of it like the uh, uh, world star hip hop is more like uh, it's like a Jerry Springer website for black people. When you make world star, you like hood famous. Okay. <laughs> and and the fact that she made it, I was like, whoa, okay. Congratulations to um, Jada Parker, now hood famous. Hood <laughs> rich bitch. <laughs> Yeah, she got that good sexy red rub. Oh god, man. Please don't. <laughs> it's bad enough she was on Tyler it was bad enough she was on Tyler's album. I don't need her back in NXT. <laughs> I mean, low key, uh sexy red rub sounds very inappropriate. <laughs> Indeed it's our does. Um, so back to AEW. Um, obviously, yes, Max is at, um, we'll, we'll expand them to a wider re variety of homes, um, and maybe even people that don't necessarily consider pro wrestling, but right. people do still have to click it, and people still have to watch it. Do you think that them being um, Max is going to grow their product and grow them a fan base, or do you think that unless it gets them like if it gets them trending like how those crazy documentaries do on Netflix, then it's a possibility. Um, you know, like a word of mouth type thing. But the, the problem is, is that is AEW's reputation already set? I mean, that's a good question. I think the only thing we really have to go on when it comes to something like this is um, Lucha Underground. I mean, they were they were on um, that network. Literally, nobody talked about them. They got on Netflix and. Man, did they do really well. And people were clamoring for more of it, not realizing that they got canceled. Do you think that that could maybe, they could, could they get like low-key internet famous that could kind of give them something to latch on to? Or it's so bad you have to watch it? Or... Like you said, uh, well, the issue, well, the issue is, is that I knew they were in trouble when they tried to follow the NBA inside, inside the NBA that one time. And everybody was like, who the, why the fuck is Chris Jericho so fat? And that's why I was like, oh shit, it's going downhill from here. Cause if you can't, if you can't follow like that show and get in, in, and maintain an audience, then it's a problem. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, Netflix, I mean, HBO Max, it's a shot, but 
I'm trying to think what shows on HBO Max that people really want to watch every week. Um, well, they had the, um, that TV series that was based off the video game, The Last of Us. That got people I mean, talking. Uh, yeah, The Last of Us. But Euphoria, think. Uh, Game of Thrones. Euphor- oh, gosh, Euphoria. I think since, uh, Drake, ever since Drake got called out for that, yeah, no, nah, that one went down the tank. Uh, Game of Thrones. I'm just saying, like, right now. Other than, like, what show are people clamoring? Oh, I can't wait to watch this. Mm. Yeah, I would, I would say it's uh, The Last of Us, Euphoria, and uh, the, the Game of Thrones show. That's about it. So, I mean, maybe. I mean, they just had that show, The Penguin. I don't know if that did as well as it could have, but... You know, that's, and a, that's I think a different it did. conversation for a different podcast, I think. I mean, they got, they did it, but my issue, so what I'm trying to say is, if they couldn't garner that audience and there was no pay firewall, i.e. cable, what makes you think that they're going to attract new eyes with a firewall, i.e. streaming? That is a good point. <laughs> like, it's 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 not the it's not even that it's the it's the friction because I can make the argument going on HBO Max produce produces a a harder friction to find their show. Right. Well, for because... me personally, there's a better chance of me go looking uh watching them being on HBO Max rather than on cable. Um, I cut cable. Really? Yeah, I have. I mean, everybody's cutting cable. I have HBO Max. I do watch it. So you know, if it's a matter of pushing two buttons, you know, and it's gonna be live, so it's gonna be at like what, like five o'clock. I could watch AEW while I'm eating dinner. You know, that's you know not out of the realm of possibilities. See, but that's the also thing. I don't see for me, it's a harder friction because I had my cable is YouTube TV, so it was easy for me to record it and just watch it. Well, I think it's still going to be on there. It's just, I mean, it's still going to be on TNT, but it's just an added avenue. I get it because not everyone on a global scale, maybe that'll work, but I, I, I don't know if that's going to push anything in the states yeah i think that i think unless okay so you know it's not just a matter of being having more eyeballs on you it's a matter of doing something giving more people options right it's a matter of giving people a reason to have eyeballs on you and has AEW done anything as of recently, other than the titty shaking contest, to put eyes on their, you know, product? That's, I mean, that's the problem, right? Like, we can go in circles about how many stations there are, but if they're not telling a story, what good is it going to do? They were in, uh, Bridgeport, Port, Connecticut, the other week, I believe. Um, now, this mm-hmm. is just rumor and innuendo. I won't take like this as 100% gospel. But from what I hear, um, the people that actually bought tickets to be there weren't just AEW, the AEW fans. They were disgruntled AEW fans that wanted their voice to be known that they didn't like how the product was going and they were low-key dead for most of the show. Now again I did not watch Dynamite. I could not tell you. Obviously I I saw content from that show (laughs) but um I mean, if that's true, like, wow, right? 
I mean, wow. The anti-WWE crowd is bad because they're trying to be more WWE. <laughs> right. The left, I mean, it's that writes itself. But, I mean, the thing is, is this. Is you kind of knew it was going to go there. Uh, I just don't understand what they're mad about as far as the product. I could not tell you. And that's where, and that's the issue. Because it used to be, oh, at least they're not WWE. Is it because they're trying to be WWE? Uh, I'm lost. Help me, AW crowd. Help me figure this out. But would they be alienating, if they alienate their core base of fans, would they actually have the opportunity <laughs> to gain, gain more followers because they're going with, you know, the traditional wrestling formula? Well, depends because it's it's not honestly it's not I don't think one the AEW needs to tell better stories. They're starting to try. They're on the right track somewhat, so I give them the grace on that. The other part is is that the WWE and the UFC are like, and, and the only reason I throw a UFC, and you'll see where I'm going with this, it's like a fighter that fought in the UFC, and let's say they stopped fighting in the UFC, they got let go, and they join any other fighting promotion out there. You're not going to really watch them more so than the fact, you know, you're, the eyeballs won't follow like that, because everybody's eyeballs is on the main part, which is the UFC, which the main part, which is the WWE. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right. that's why I said WWE is never really built on one star. It's built as a machine to where when, even when parts are leaving, I mean, how many times we yelled, oh, my God, they miss you, Cesaro, and then Cesaro goes to AEW, and he's no better off than what he was at WWE. Oh, yeah. Or a Miro, or, a, or you see what I'm saying? So, the issue is that they have to fight the stigma that it's just the land of ex WWE guys, and that's what the casual viewer sees because that's their perception. And you know what the oh, it's just a, it's just because they think AEW is like oh, it's just a B League WWE. Not whether that's fair or not is not what I'm saying. It's I'm looking at it from someone who like maybe watches once a year and buys that one WrestleMania pay per view and doesn't watch anything else. Right. And you know the the stupid thing about it is they did they did better with Miro than literally anybody else had they got Miro over he had a great get gimmick you know I've never been a supporter of Miro and even I was like low-key you know this guy is you know doing some good stuff and then he left for two and a half years and we never saw him afterwards it's just and you know obviously Ricky Starks Every time it seems like they get lightning in the bottle, they they let it go. And it's mm -hmm. so stupid because, okay, well, you don't, obviously, you know, they lost some big, um, some big stars. Well, then you have somebody to replace them. Like, Miro could have been in the title pixels. Ricky Starks could have been in the title pixel. A private party could have been mega stars at this point if they would have used them when they actually had them. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So that's the... I, and that's the issue, too, because everything... The, they're doing the thing we hated with WWE for. 
it seems like they just reverse roles. Like WWE's more into this long store, this long term butterfly effect storytelling, which I love because every and and it's like spaghetti. Everything's connected. Right. Roman's connected to Punk. Who's connected to Heyman? Who's connected to Roman? Who's connected to Seth? Who's connected to Bronson? Who's connected? You see, what I'm saying to Drew. Who's connected to Punk? You see how all right. <laughs> like li- that's just six people right there, and that's a one match that you could break off six different angles from and AEW just has this start stop mentality when it comes to storylines and who is where I think the longest person they had on on a storyline was Tony Storm and the whole just retired quote unquote maybe yeah I, I wouldn't take too much stock in the fact that she said that um, she retired I mean she's literally the top female wrestler in her field right now. Like, literally nobody can hold a pussy-scented candle to her, so I highly I... doubt that she's going to be um, retiring anytime soon. This is totally a storyline. I get that. I mean, I, yeah, I think it is, too. It's just the fact that that wasn't something AEW brought up. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? It, you see, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. It, themselves. Right. It's not something where AEW would go, oh, yeah, Tony, go in there and fake retire. She's pulling that out. The odds, she, the more likely she pulled that out of her ass. Oh, yeah. Her, her yams. Whereas the kids say, yat, you're yat. Oh. Um. Yeah, I mean, the, their main story right now is that the Beast Mortos, they're calling him Frank for some apparent reason, so I can't necessarily tell you why they they do what they do, they just do it. It seems like you get over despite yourself, not because the, um, not because the engine, the machine is behind you in AEW. Well, the machine is behind you in the sense that if you get eyeballs on them, they'll be with you. If that it's was the case, just, Ricky Starks would still be on TV right now. Um, I don't know what they did with Ricky. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. I'm going to keep, I, I ain't going to lie, gay. I don't know what the fuck Ricky, I don't know Ricky owes some people money. <laughs> he Well, he definitely replaced Private Party on the milk container. Oh yeah, he is definitely on that milk crate. <laughs> God damn, Ricky Starks on the milk card. Got my man's on the milk card. Yeah, that you ain't lying. But it's just you know, it's frustrating to say the least. I mean, it has to be. Oh yeah. Well, uh. I think they'll do it for our news and talking about AEW for the, the the second. And now a quick word from our sponsors. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside. 